Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get over, Tony. Yeah, give it's it cool. up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we're doing. Hi, Brian. Hi, hey, Tony. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. You've been doing a lot of golfing, man. I've, I've seen a lot of photos. Are you? <laughs> You've seen a lot. Of, where are you seeing photos? Uh, you just heard me Instagram. say that I've been Instagram. golfing. There was one post. Yes, yeah. I've been golfing a lot. I love it. It's a lot of fun. A lot of sunlight. Riding around on golf carts, smoking pot, hitting balls. You going to the fun. Trump course? Is that, been I've there? been everywhere. Yeah. What's I've your favorite everywhere. one here in Los Angeles? I've been <laughs> I've been to a lot of places. Uh, I mean, I did play Trump. Was it the nicest course that I've played on? Yeah. It's a it's a two hundred and eighty million dollar course that uh, I got a good deal on, luckily. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great places. Um, yeah, tons of them. Shoal Canyon, Rustic Cove. A uh, bunch of them. What's your best score? I don't know. No, no. Good. Good, Good has been my Good. best score. <laughs> Par. What is it? 72? Par something 72. Like that. I don't know. Something like that. Ryan J.E. Belt is here. Wow. He draws every single episode. Some amazing drawings lately. He's unbelievable. Posters. Every episode. On for sale. It's all out there. RyanJEBelt.com. You can get them. Why not? Uh, Vito's Pizza, delicious Vito's Pizza. I've been uh, indulging a lot this week and a lot of Italian fruit food from Vito's. I had the baked ziti yet again with meatballs this week. I had the baked ziti with sausage and meatballs. This is golf food, dude. Wow. It's good for uh, people that ride electric bicycles, oh, too. This really? Is the, this is the electric bicycle diet, That's baked awesome. ziti and pizza, all from Vito's locations everywhere. I like the one on La Cienega, but they're also out in Santa Monica. They're in Sherman Oaks. They're everywhere. Vito's Pizza. Speedweed, the great Gino, always oh, yeah. joining us, always has our backs. The great Better Box Studio was home to us for many months during the quarantine, and uh, we absolutely love them. Get a candle at damngoodcandleco.com. Yeah. Roast Master Class is up and bumping. Patreon.com slash Hinchcliffe for a bunch of extra Tony talking about making fun of people stuff. Jeremiah is supposedly going on the road again. He has a bunch of dates that he just keeps announcing and canceling. <laughs> yeah. He's filling in for 14 headliners that don't want the dates, and then he's surprised when he has to cancel them in the end. Yeah. But he's supposedly going to Raleigh, North Carolina, August 13th through the 15th, and Minneapolis, Minnesota, August 26th through the 29th. <laughs> what else is going on? Anything crazy? No. Oh. Well, you got to get up to get down. I'm talking about erectile dysfunction, and it isn't always easy to talk about erectile dysfunction. Usually we just brush it off or blame ourselves, saying, like, I th think I lost my mojo, or we avoid it altogether with excuses like I had a long day at work, or sorry, honey, I'm just not feeling it, or I think I'm into men. But with Roman, <laughs> it is easy to talk about. With a real doctor who can prescribe real medication, it's simple, safe, and totally discreet. Yeah, with Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED. All the comfort and privacy of your own home. The doctor will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward and simple and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Tony and complete an online visit. Erectile dysfunction used to be tough to tackle, but now there's Roman. Complete an online visit today to connect with a doctor and take care of it. Go to Roman.com slash Tony today. If approved, you'll get $15 off your first order of ED treatment. Wow, $15 off. Get a boner. That's GetRoman.com slash Tony. GetRoman.com slash Tony. And boy, oh boy, are we excited to announce the return of one of our favorite sponsors. You guys know this, fans of the show. If you're having a rough time getting through lockdowns and social distancing, well, then I want to tell you about some of the products from Infinite CBD. You remember Infinite wow. CBD. Infinite CBD has the cleanest, <laughs> purest CBD available. If you've never heard of CBD, it's derived from hemp plants and backs all the benefits of marijuana without getting high. And Infinite CBD has a ton of different products that we've used, and they're just great. I rub it all over my body all the time. Here's some Infinite <laughs> CBD products. I think it can get you through the hard times, Tony. CBD AM Plus, difficulty concentrating while you're working from home. 
This has CBD plus caffeine for mental clarity. Mm. CBD gummies, that's my favorite, with new flavors <laughs> like sour and full spectrum gummies. Woo, full spectrum. Woo. A lot of people say that I'm in that spectrum. If you think you're losing it, these can help you relax. <laughs> CBD lube, you know, it feels good. And you've got time to kill. Treat yourself. Actually, that's really, I, I, instead of using spit, Try it out. That's CBD right. lube's amazing. Put if lube you <laughs> on your fucking stump of a dick. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't tried CBD, look it up. There's a lot of research and users reporting benefits like reduce anxiety, reduce inflammation, and more. So go to infinitecbd.com to see which of their products fits your needs. That's infinitecbd.com. And if you use promo code <laughs> KILLTONY, you will get 20% off <laughs> once more. That's infinitecbd.com. Promo code KILLTONY for 20% off. <laughs> there we I go. I like that voice. You, you know, know, we're just got to get <laughs> through it sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm just excited about these sponsors. They just, I just love these, everything about them. We're having fun. It's a beautiful Monday. We're live on YouTube. The live streamers are amongst us. They're watching, right? Mm. Everything's out there. Yep. Okay, let's start tonight's episode then. We have a fun one, I do believe, lined up. You know, we never know that. I Sometimes I lie. I say tonight's going to be a fun show, but I don't know how, I don't know what kind of mood the band's in. I don't know who's going to get pulled out of the bucket. I don't know if the regulars might be prepared or whatever. I don't ever know. Ah. This is a completely improvised show. Other podcasts, they know what they're going to talk about. They have a big whiteboard in f- right behind the camera that you never see in which they talk about the things that they're going to talk about that they plan to talk about all week. Anyway. We do have a band on this show. They commit to being different characters every episode. We never know what they're going to be. Let's find out what they are tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Burke, Joel Jimenez, Jet Ski, Jesse Johnson, and Chroma Chris. Here we are. Let's see what happens tonight, shall we? Here they come, I'm sure, any moment now. Oh... Oh, we know this crew. Oh, wow. Wait, I... Okay, I thought it was newscasters, but now I'm a bit confused. Could be 80s comedians. Striking a miss. <laughs> what, what, is it newscasters? Uh, foul ball. Oh, it is newscasters. All no, right. it is not. It's foul not. is not <laughs> is when, not when something's going smooth in baseball, Tony. I thought it was, uh, perhaps you were a sportscaster calling a foul ball. There you go, sportscaster. It is. You said After newscasters. We so do not. You're say all the news. sports guys. Yes. Okay, well then you're not newscasters, you are sportscasters. Sports announcers, sportscasters, so sports broadcasters, whatever you like to say, Jody, yes. <laughs> okay, so these are new characters. Uh, no, they debuted about four years ago, very forgettable. <laughs> okay, well welcome back. What's your name? My name is Teddy Massingill. Teddy Massingill? Yes. <laughs> Massengill. Uh, M-A-S-S-I-N-G-I-L. Massengill. All right. And who's this here next to you with the <laughs> massive coat? Hey, I got to fit all that muscle in there. <laughs> 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 uh, wow. My name is Gary Balls. Gary. I love sports. Gary Balls. Welcome, Gary. <laughs> Gary used to be very fat. Oh, okay. That's why the coat is big. Who are you? My name is Forrest, Tony. Forrest Dunk. Forest Dunk. Uh, Forest. Forest Dunk. Okay. That is correct. All right. Why do you have headphones on? Well, I have to listen to the people giving me the stats in the booth. Okay. And how about you? Hey, hey Tony. It is Grand Slam Sam here coming from you from the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Grant. There's Slam really not Sam. any sports right now. So what have you guys been up to? Actually, <laughs> baseball is back in season, actually. And this just in, NFL canceled their preseason. Did that really just come in? Oh, yeah, no, no, I did know that. Preseason, yep. Okay, we got a bunch of sports guys with us here. I know you guys asked for it, for them to come back, and you got what you wanted, the sports. <laughs> this has been four years in the making, the story of a comeback, the underdog, the Rocky story. 
<laughs> you know, you look a lot like, maybe I'm wrong because I get them all mixed together. There's a lot of characters, but you look like the 80s comedian that I've we've had on this show that before. That is actually my brother, Zippy. Zippy. And you guys have the same outfit, hair, actually, mustache. Nope, different mustache. Zippy doesn't have a, uh, a mustache. When you do thousands of characters, they all start to look a little bit alike. All right. They all look alike to me. Well, welcome, guys. We're going to have fun. We have uh, four sign-ups in the bucket. They are uh, Actually, we have five tonight, so somebody's going to be left out. That, that gives it a little bit, of a little bit of risk involved. Yeah. Five sign-ups, four open slots. So we're going to see what happens. You, you get the Sally Jesse Raphael. Remember her? The glasses? The red glasses. All right, never mind. Wow. There you go. No. That bra- red band showing his age. <laughs> Sally Jesse Raphael reference here. From, uh, <laughs> from deep old Hollywood. <laughs> Salad dressing Raphael. Salad dressing Raphael. <laughs> David Lucas is in the audience roasting. Roasting already. <laughs> Salad dressing Raphael. <laughs> so dumb. Let's get the show started. You know, we started the last couple few episodes with Michael Lair, but you know what? Every single time that guy goes up, he proves to be a fucking closer. So we're going to flip it around again, ladies and gentlemen, kicking off tonight's show, a beloved figure to many, hated by so many more. It's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, here's William Montgomery. What's up? First and foremost, I want to give it up for salad dressing Raphael. (laughs) He is a good friend of my uncle's. Uh, I wrote the set. Um, after a couple ice houses, let's just call it that, uh, a couple nights ago. Um, you know the difference between quen- cancer and a child? My dad's got it. Uh, who needs Jesus when you've got a metal detector? Uh, this is me working at Disney World. Uh, check out the castle over there. I'm coming out with a movie. It's called Spiky Pineapple. Uh, How do I hold this thing? Wow, William Montgomery wow. really. Uh, what was up with that time? Woo! He really. Uh, Whoa! What happened there? You left a lot of space for laughter there at the end. <laughs> I don't, you must have thought that spiky pineapple joke was going to really. I did. Have you recently uh, held a pineapple? Yes. They are spiky. Yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, I came out uh, with a movie. It's called Spiny Pineapple. But literally, I don't know how to hold the thing. Why would it be a movie? Why would you make an entire movie out of a spiky pineapple? It is a flipper. It's flipper, too. Uh, oh. You know, you could just hold the pineapple with uh, the spiky part away from you. Uh-huh. Perfect. Maybe I won't write that movie. Did you ri- How much did you write? Like 200 pages. 200 pages. Wow, clearly you wrote something other than jokes this week. I was just wondering exactly what it was. Does your dad have cancer? He does not. He's cancer-free. Uh, it's been two years. So did he used to have cancer? or he just? Yeah, had, had he did at one point. Really? It's, it's pretty much a miracle. And then William moved away. <laughs> <laughs> then I moved away and his cancer was gone. The doctors didn't know what happened, but oh. it was me moving away. My goodness gracious. How about the, the Jesus metal detector joke? Can we talk about this for a second? If you don't need Jesus, if you have a metal detector, can you explain? Yeah, you don't need Jesus if you've got a metal detector. What do you mean by that? I mean, how many times have you been with Jesus um, watching him walk on water? You can't walk on water. You're a fisherman. Jesus is a fisherman. He's a fisherman. Jesus is a fisherman. He's a fisherman. Is he? 
It was he a Jesus fisherman? Jesus is a fisherman. What passage of the Bible says he's a fisherman? Uh, August 2nd. Do you know Ted Massengill? Yeah, more of a carpenter, uh, but uh, you know, uh, he. I think he's coming up with a f uh, fisherman because of the uh, the five loaves of uh, and the two fish uh, story and the parable in the Bible. Five yeah, loaves and two fish. Are we talking about Red Band's midnight snack last night? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> You've been posting some wacky. A meal lately. of biblical proportions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. When is when is Red Band gonna die? <gasps> Whoa, William, Red Band. What do no, you have I've to been say about sick that? of Red Band the past couple weeks. Why? Well, I'm definitely not going to die of laughter. Whoa! Come on, what does that well, mean, Red I, Band? Because even when we asked you to explain that joke about the metal detector, it still made no sense. So you what wrote do you a joke mean? that That's an one audience of my best is going jokes, to sit there. Dude. Audience That's is going one to sit of my there best and jokes. Know what you're talking William, about. Okay, up. William, back up. Okay. All right, let's talk about I'm it. I'm sick. I got 104. Let's talk, let's talk about another one of your jokes here today. This is my this is me working at Disney World. Hey, check out the castle. Hey, look at the castle over there. Did you just did steal you that from a second grader? I don't even think a second grader. Like, no. I mean, that's, that's not Look at the castle over there. My point is, Disney World is known for a Cinderella's castle. And I swear to God, if I'm working there, I am going to be saying, hey, y'all look, look at that castle over there. Please. The Cinderella's castle. I've been working for Disney now for five fucking years. No, you work at a storage facility. A job well, that, a I'm job actually, that you I had to resign. No, you didn't. Did I you? I had to resign. Did you really If anyone resign? has a job, do you have a job? Gino, you got a job for me? Yeah, nobody's really hiring right okay, now. Okay, okay. Ball. I, we had, I literally had tens and tens of people offer you jobs the well, last few I years. Well, now I finally need one. You finally need one in the middle of a global pandemic. In a pandemic, I need a job. But you didn't accept any of the high-paying jobs that would have changed your life and alleviated your alcoholism when the economy was, was booming. That was several months ago. <laughs> yeah. The economy's booming. I'm drinking a bunch of alcohol and Sprite bottles. And you're telling me about these jobs, and I greatly apologize. I should have listened to you. What I need a job right now. So what kind of job are you willing to do? I'm going to be back in Memphis soon. You are, without a doubt. So what kind of job are you willing to do? It's just so that the listeners out there know, because a lot of the fans of the show, you know, we have ZipRecruiter. There's a lot of people hiring. So my question is this. Just so that everybody knows, what's the worst job that what you're willing to do? What am I? Yeah, worst what's, job I've ever done. No, I no, was, no, no. William, listen. What's the worst job that you're willing to take right now? I would say a, a golf person at a putt-putt. A golf person at a putt Well, You're not getting that, that is job. That is a low... You're not getting that job. Putt-putts are closed. Even the putting courses on... I need a job, Tony. I know. So let's try... I mean, what, are, what will I do? Yeah. What will you... That's what I'm asking Red you. Red Band, are you hiring me? <laughs> no. You t you were saying it the other day. No, I wasn't. <laughs> William what? Bryant had to get a job at Trader Joe's. What are you talking about? Who's Ryan? <laughs> Who's Ryan? Okay, William, what type of job do you think you'd be good at? Uh, like a Petco? What would you do at a Petco? Do you know a lot I'd about I'd work pet? around the fish. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Okay, so let's do this. I'm a customer. I walk into a Petco. You work at the Petco. Hello, can you help me? Yeah, what are you looking for? A uh, channel cat? That's a channel catfish. What are you looking for? A channel cat? What the fuck's a channel cat? I'm a customer <laughs> here. I was looking for some... David, why'd you tell me to say that? I was looking... Come on, dude. William, I... William, over here. You can't just... There's no, like, crowd Yeah, what happened there? What happened there? William, so I'm at a Petco. I'm a customer. Hi, I'm looking to buy a squirrel. Can you help me? Yeah, what's your name? Bob. Bob, what's your last name? Jenkins. Bob Jenkins, and I'm here to buy a squirrel. Do you have a squirrel? What, what size do you want? Medium. A medium squirrel. What, two feet? Yes. <laughs> Everyone a knows two that. A two-foot squirrel? Yeah, medium is two feet. Everyone knows it's that. It's $1,000. A two-foot <laughs> fucking squirrel? It's a thousand bucks. Do you accept 
cashier's check? Yeah, cashier's checks. <laughs> I accept cash. That's it? A two-foot squirrel? What kind of Petco is this? Whoa! <laughs> 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 I'm I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a two foot squirrel. Thanks, mom. What is that noise, Brian? Uh, s- retail store atmosphere sounds. No, we don't need the background noise. That, w- that wait, that's squirrel. perfect. I work at God, a God, what though. was that? I'm writing a script called Pufferfish. How do you hold this thing? They are spiky. It has spikes on it. Exactly. That's what made my joke funny. Holding a pineapple, coming out with a pineapple movie. It's Have you been talking with your parents lately? Yeah. They, they a care little deeply bit. about you. What have they been saying? Uh, my mom wants me to, uh, for me to email her my address so she can uh, send me a Weber grill. Oh, that's very nice of her. That's very nice. I know. Work. I'm thinking. What do you? What do you know how to grill? Do, what do you? What do you? Do you normally like cook cheeseburgers and stuff? You do. Do you? Or is yeah, that like cheeseburgers. How would you make a cheeseburger? Can you explain? What to do the you people? mean? Probably ten minutes on either side. The, well, ten no, minutes. I don't know about wow. this. See, this this is what's in. This could be a good idea for you. You could start your own cooking show. Yeah. Literally, tens of thousands of people have been doing it during the quarantine. But I think yours could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I cook these cheeseburgers as like ten minutes on either side. How would you prep the cheeseburgers? Would you just buy them already patted up? A lot of onions. You just. A lot of onions, a lot of flowers in the kitchen. Are there any? Um, is there any beef involved? A lot of beef. How many? How much onions and how much beef? Two feet. Two feet of beef. Yeah, like the squirrel. Is this a joke? <laughs> I don't w- know. William, you could call it Willy Yum. What? <laughs> if he had a cooking show, you could call it Willy Yum. Why? Why would he do that? Why U M? Yeah, Y U M. Yum. Yeah. Willy Yum Yum Yum. Is that funnier? Yummer. Are you writing <laughs> jokes for William? William Monk Yummery. <laughs> Thank you so much for he did literally my set tonight. It was by Joel. You're welcome. Oh, and that, that makes a lot of sense now. I was I didn't want to say it. I ended up saying it. There Joel, you thank you so much. That was gonna be my last set. You're retiring? I'm saying tonight I wasn't prepared. For my set and Joel sit. Why me. do you think that is? We would now like to hang you from the rafters tonight. <laughs> We're retiring your Crocs. <laughs> Come on. Is there anything else you want to say before we let you go? I have been uh, to the mountaintop. Yeah? What mountaintop are you talking about? It's a Martin Luther King speech. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Whoa. Red Band got his first and only fart sound out of the way tonight, so at least something good came out of this. There goes William Montgomery, everybody. Him. Very exciting stuff. All right, pull the name out of the bucket, ladies and gentlemen. I do believe this is this young man's first time on the show. It's going to be exciting to meet someone right now. Put your hands together for Dave Sarah, everyone. Dave Sarah, here we go. Dave Sarah. Thank you. Uh, Dave Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. I probably shouldn't even be here right now. I should... I'll be at home with my mom. Um, my mother and I own a puppy mill. Puppy mill is where you raise purebred dogs, you know, Boston Terriers, Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, ugly poodles. So rescues have been outselling purebreds uh, two to one last couple years in California, so I don't really know what we're going to do. I mean, this puppy mill has been in our family for generations. So I just did what any good son would do. I Bought a whip and a lead pipe, and honestly, I'm just going to abuse these puppies and fucking turn them into rescues. I really think that's the easiest way to do it. I'm no expert, but um, I can definitely do that. Um, And puppies are so unaggressively dumb and obedient. 
takes night after night and night beating him over the head. You don't want to kill the damn thing, you just want to make it scared of you, you know? I mean, you know the look. Thank you. Dave Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. You uh, is, is any of that true? You guys really have a No, not now? true at all. No. Not at all. Mm -mm. Huh. That was actually the first joke I ever wrote it was okay. for actually Kill Tony. It was like that joke. Oh, About okay. Like well, that's a, a big difference. Ago. That was your first joke you ever wrote, and William mm -hmm. wrote his jokes uh, on the drive over here, clearly. Yeah, that so is the difference. What a change of pace that is for the show. <laughs> oh, pineapples are spiky. I guess I could say that. There's a castle. Jesus or metal detector. Okay, that's not finished, but good enough for today. It's words. <laughs> All right. So, Dave, welcome to the show. This Thank is your you. first time here, correct? It is, it is. How long have you been doing stand-up? In August, it'll be four years. Okay. You from yeah. L.A.? From Los Angeles. Born and raised? Born and raised. What part? Montebello. It's like a... Um, Ooh, Montebello. Mon La Gaguza. Bafangu. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's about... Uh, it's right next to East L.A., so... But, Montebello, uh, your parent. Oh, oh, okay. Montebello is yeah. not as nice as it sounds, it turns out. No, it mean, sounds like it would be up near, like, Mendocino and all that, but it's Have not. Have you ever no, no, seen Montebello. Lake Paris, no. California? I mean... What? It, Lake Paris, California. It sounds really fancy, but it's right. garbage. Yeah, like, you, yeah. You, you, you know that. Well, you're, really our, you're, our, you're our East L.A. correspondent. I am actually a white man from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forest Dunks. <laughs> it's crazy that you're from Philadelphia and your name's Forrest Dunks because those are two Tom Hanks references. I'm <laughs> Philadelphia and Forrest Dunks. You're quicker than I thought. <laughs> Back to you in the studio, Tony. <laughs> Dave Sarah. Yes, sir. What do you do for a living? I uh, work for the company that owns uh, Body Glove and Whammo. We do processing for them. Yeah. Body Glove and the Whammo. Ba Body Glove's the wetsuit company. Oh, and, okay. Um, Whammo's the one that owns Frisbee, Hula Hoop, Silly Oh, strings, sweet. Sick. Slide. Fuck cool. yeah. Just what do you do for them? I'm in processing. So like um, uh, uh, order uh, e-commerce processing. So basically Amazon, all their websites go into one channel. You got to print okay, it out. Okay, so you're processing. still working through the quarantine. Yeah, you know, I just got the job in uh, March. Uh, luckily, like... I only worked like 20 days in the office before they sent us home to work from home, so I was really lucky on that. But um, you're a very clean yeah. cut guy. You look oh, like you have your you. life together. You yeah. look oh, like you drink a, you, plenty kid. of water. Oh, Am I right? You no, drink a lot of I'm water. A complete fucking degenerate, to be honest. With you. Really? Tell oh, us yeah. about that. Tell us. Well, about here, here's a funny story. So um, the the night that uh, I think Ryan Stickler was here, it was one of the nights where David Luke is killed, and then you kind of yeah. Made, you're gonna, you talked to uh, uh, William on that day about him being the second regular. And so on that night, I was I actually Wait, I talked to... William was a regular before David Lucas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were talking to William about saying, what do you think about uh, David coming on as a second regular? I and wasn't then, really asking his opinion. Not, no, no, you weren't. No, you were just talking... No, William just, doesn't his, help me with any and, decisions and, uh, and honestly, in the world. And honestly, it's funny because <laughs> William's trying to do bits talking to you, and you're just like, dude, shut the fuck up. No, that's not what I... You know, just listen to me. Where did this me. conversation happen? In the back over here. What were you doing in the back? Okay, so you... <laughs> So I actually, uh, you called me very last, and I was in the back smoking already. Oh. And I, so I was technically blacklisted. Wow, you really are a degenerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's jokes about me o ODing in the bathroom and stuff of like that. Of course, yeah, we make jokes about right. people that don't show sure, up. Sure, sure, yeah. But um, yeah. So then, so you were out back, you missed your spot, and then yeah. it turns out that you're out back again, eavesdropping on confidential no, Kill well, Tony we'll business. <laughs> he looks oh. kind of like a cop. <laughs> no, I You don't do know. have cop You have cop face. Yeah, yeah, how long so have you been impersonating? <laughs> how long have you been impersonating Todd Glass? Oh, hey, Todd Glass. I like Todd Glass. Anyway, so um, so yeah, no, I went back there with William, and this was kind of before back there. There, this was about a year ago, so they were a little less strict as they are now. Now, how do you know when they're strict and when they're not strict? I mean, I've been coming here for four years. Like, you know, I, I you've I mean, been going I, to the back for four years. Not to the back. People just let you back there because they think you like work in he's show business. Yeah, dealing second. Yeah. So basically, that was a uh, that was actually well, I don't, I'm not gonna say I'm not, anyway, but yeah. So I just would basically just walk back there. Just if you don't pay, like I wouldn't pay attention to anybody. No, they not they, they stop a lot of people. But they do You're stop suspiciously a lot of clean cut looking. Right. right. That's that's why what started this conversation. S yes. Yeah. Suspiciously, I suppose. Yeah. So what else is a degenerate like about you? I mean, I don't know. I just you know I don't want to. Yeah. You smoke a lot of pot. Smoke what else? Smoke a lot of pot. Smoke a lot of cigarettes. Do some blow. Oh, look at this. That's how did how did they, uh, why, only in 2020 are there fat cocaine addicts? Right. I know. And uh, I, I wore a sweater today, so it kind of 
hide no, my belly a little bit. No, we can still tell. I know, I know. He's you just can. snorting powdered sugar. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. It's but incredible. Yeah. Do you mean Coca-Cola? Mm-hmm. What's your living situation? Jesus I live with my brother Christ. in Montebello. Um, my brother, is, he has a schizophrenia, paranoid schizophrenia. He's like 12 years older than me. So he gets uh, medical... Uh, he gets some medical money, and I get some for taking care of him as a caretaker. Oh, wow. So, that's, so that helps us. Uh, my parents live, like, about a mile away, and we live in the same house that we grew up in. So my parents just live oh, that's about nice. a mile. They could, cool. they're, they're in their late 70s, my parents. So, like, they only drop in every once in a while. They couldn't really right. handle they, him. You ever do lines of blow with your parents? No, of course not. Okay. You ever do lines of blow with your schizophrenic brother? I, was, I have before. And oh, he's, uh, my and goodness. He's what kind of caretaker <laughs> are you? That's, the, that's uh, a bad idea. <laughs> uh, but this was, m- this was long before he was receiving any um, government money or right. like, even before we knew he was fucked up. Right. But like, you couldn't like tell that he was fucked up at all? No, no, no. We, we could tell. We just didn't know, like, the condition. I mean, it took, like, 10 years to get his medicine correct. You know what I mean? Like, he went through some, right. some fucking... So like terrible. what? Tell us about I it. I mean, he went through a, p- a stage where his body was contorting, and he was he couldn't control it, and it was fucking t- terrible to like be around. And oh. he wouldn't want to go to the hospital. He'd freak Jesus. out. Jesus, I mean, like I'm that. friends with Michael Lair. That happens to him all the time. <laughs> right, That's I not know. terrible to be around. No, I mean, but like, yeah, the, you know, I'll show you some. The f- body some contor- con- contorting. I mean, he looked like he was having an exorcism almost. Well, that's, a, that's pretty entertaining. I mean, you yeah. know, you're doing, you do a, smoke some weed, do a couple lines of blow. The next thing you know, your brother's spider walking yeah. backwards to <laughs> at you down the Seriously. hallway. It's like, yeah. what the fuck? Oh. You oh should have just bought him one of those Jabberwocky masks. Yeah. Yes, a Jabberwocky mask. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Nobody it? knows. No one knows what Joel's talking the about. The internet <laughs> will. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, Forrest. Keep up the great work back there. And <laughs> Thank I'll you. Check back in with you. Forrest Dunks, ladies and gentlemen. Back to me in studio. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Dave, what else about you? What's your love life like? You seem oh, uh, you fool a lot of women with this clean cut right. image on the outside, and then just sloppiness no. on the inside. Yeah, no, you know, um, I haven't. I was, I, I was like in two long relationships in my twenties. Mm-hmm. One was like five years old. Two one feet long. Yeah, maybe a full <laughs> foot. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, so um, my last girlfriend, we broke up about four years ago. We lived together for about eight months, but nothing. I mean, I'm what? Uh, how'd that end? Why did that end? Tell the truth. Oh, um, I will tell the truth. Um, the okay, so the it was so uh, at that time this was um, about four years ago. Uh, Valentine's Day was on a Sunday, uh-huh. and on Friday I had just gotten off of work, went home where we were living in an apartment in Pasadena. Yeah, and then um, uh, went uh, on a little bender. N- well, no, but she she was asleep when I got there, and uh-huh. uh, she'd be you sleeping r- through the days. You you raped her? No, I didn't. Rape okay, her. go on. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean we're, she was asleep. It was Friday night. I my, I get a c- call from my cousin saying, Hey, you want to come to downtown have a drink? I was like, yeah, no, I don't feel like waking her up and explaining all this bullshit. So I didn't. The next so morning, you went and had a drink. No, no, no. I oh. did not go. Right. I didn't wake her up. I decided not to go, not okay. to have a drink, whatever. So the next, and like my ex at the time, she was a fellow degenerate as well. It's not okay. like she was like. So you woke up, she woke up the next day. You guys wake up yeah. Saturday morning. Well, Saturday she goes, morning. guy, you didn't even wake me up last night. And you're no, like, yeah, no, well, my like buddy invited me for a drink. And she's like, we could have gone and had drinks. You didn't fucking wake me up. And then you broke up because of that. Well, no, what happened was I said, oh yeah, my cousin called me. He said, uh, why don't you come down to have drinks? Yeah. And I didn't even, I said, no, nah, I'm not going to go. And she got mad at me because she's like, yeah, we knew what you were going to do. And I fucking flipped out. Why'd dude. you flip out? I just flipped out because I knew what she was insinuating that I, I was. I can't mis- picture you being mad. Can you do it without even thinking about it? Can you really get mad and show Fuck us? Fuck you, dude! No, I wasn't gonna fucking do that. What do you mean I wasn't gonna fucking do that? Wow, this is like gay Tony wow. Soprano. I know. This is <laughs> exciting. I've always wondered what gay Tony Soprano would be like. <laughs> yeah. Woke so, up this so it morning. Was the day, it was the day before <laughs> Valentine's Day. Girlfriend was mad yeah, at me. Know. She'll yeah. be fine. She'll be fine. She will gave be fine. drugs and my schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Schizophrenic well, brother. You well, ever, uh, you, ever time, uh, I mean, you ever you ever give uh, gonna... compassionate masturbation to your schizophrenic brother? Dude, Have you ever heard of that, that before? Is, that's a scary <laughs> concept. I did not know. I've caught him masturbating a couple times, but you ever what'd you what'd you do when you caught him? Sprayed him with nothing. Spray. I just like ah, just that. Ah, just, come ah, on, just faster, come harder. On. <laughs> uh, faster. Come on, finish already. We call that an assist. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's on character. Funny in the moment. There you go. Good timing on that. 
Forrest Dunks is back, everybody. He's heating up. <laughs> Dave, anything else we need to know about you before we let you go? That's going to be it, I think, yeah. Fun times. Good jokes. Thank you very I think much. Uh, I think with an audience that that puppy mill thing about abused dogs, Thank smart, you. funny yeah. approach. Thank At you. first, it was kind of a little touchy because, yeah, you know, first, anytime yeah, you're hurting animals nervous. and stuff. I mean, yeah. I've been on the belly, belly room before. I've been in the belly room and in the OR, and I've always wanted to, you know, do... There you go. This stage, is a version so this of is it. A version of it. I'm down. So You're getting thank closer. You. There he goes. Thank Dave, you. Sarah, thank everybody. <laughs> I get knocked down, but I get up again. All right, back to the bucket we go. Okay, this is another young man, ladies and gentlemen. Zach Bogus is next on Kill Tony. <laughs> Here he is, Zach Bogus, everybody. <laughs> Women and children are a lot like baseballs. You can hit them with a bat, but you better run home fast. Getting kind of tired of this lockdown bullshit? I mean, it's been months without a decent school shooting. When I was a little kid, I thought I was gay, so I told my dad. And like the good Christian man that he is, he sent me to church for conversion therapy. And it must have worked, because I figured out I was straight after the priest lost his ring in my asshole. To this day, when I fart, it smells like holy water. I lost my anal beads. I miss them so much. Without them, I feel empty inside. I consider myself a pretty open sexually guy. I mean, I'd fuck just about anybody, except for war vets. I hear they all have PTSDs. <laughs> I got one more. I'm a cancer survivor. I dated one for almost a month, nearly killed myself. I don't care what they say, Virgos and cancers, not compatible. There you go, Zach Bogus. Was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine. Hey, I never understood a single word he said, but I held him his wine. Yeah, step back from that ledge. Bound from Zach, from my friend. All right, Zach Bogus. Howdy. <laughs> the best part of that song, by the way, is the, the second verse when he comes in. If I was the king of the world, tell you what I do. We don't give a fuck anymore here on Kill Tony, everybody. We are talking about a song right now. And makes oh, we love to you. All right. Very good. <laughs> We're losing our minds. <laughs> You know I love the lady. Yeah. You love and to have me some too. fun. Turn that I missus to a miss and, and I love my wife. And a straight right. shoot son we of just a gun. Work. We just work. All right. Zach Bogus, uh, welcome to the show. This is your Thank first you. time on or you've been on before? No, this is my first time on, but I've welcome, signed welcome. up like over 20 times. Well, there you go. Look at this. Dreams are coming true. A lot of people that signed up many times never had a chance of getting on or getting on. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Thank you very How much. How long have you been doing stand-up? This is my second time. Second time ever doing stand-up, but you signed up tens of times? I have, yes. Wh how come you didn't go to any other mics well, or anything? Uh, well, I used to work a lot, but... Uh, Where, where'd you work? Malibu at a restaurant. Oh, no nice. Malibu has great restaurants. Which restaurant? Uh, Paradise Cove. Oh, Beach I love Paradise Cove. Yeah, it's big great. fan of Paradise Cove. Yeah, it's all right. Is it's Paradise great. Cove the one with the deck outside with the seagulls that come up and yeah. there's like the fishing seagulls wire? That will attack you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. seagulls definitely attack. Saw a lady have a, lose a whole glass of red wine over that balcony before. And there's uh, all those uh, trailers, like a trailer park right in front of it, and that's where I think Woody Harrelson or somebody weird like that lives. Woody Harrelson, <laughs> another uh, Buckeye. From Columbus, Ohio. I've seen Nick Nolte at that uh, Paradise Cove as well. Really? Yep. What were you doing at Paradise Cove? They have a Groupon or something like that? I go there once every nine years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the poor one on the show. Venmo at Jeremiah Dash Watkins. <laughs> I'm a little bitch boy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Tony wants from me. <laughs> no. Plowing right ahead. Hello. Wait, Back I thought, to you. Well, how's that your Venmo? I thought you were Teddy Massengill. Ah, it's a charitable donation for <laughs> orphans that I know. At Jeremiah Dash Watkins, the little bitch. <laughs> 
Oh, you, is the little bitch a part of it? No, <laughs> parentheses. <laughs> write the little bitch in the description when you're paying him $20. <laughs> 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 Look up his song, I Need You on YouTube. It has 3,000 views. Back to you, Tony. <laughs> okay. Okay, Zach. So uh, you've only done stand-up twice. When was your first time doing stand-up? It was at the beginning of March at um, MI's West Side Theater. Okay. Yep. This March? Yep. Okay. Great time to start. Heck yeah, absolutely. How long have you lived in L.A.? Where are you from? I'm from New York originally. I've been in L.A. for like seven years. So Upstate New York? Uh, no, uh, Brooklyn. Oh, very nice. What made you move to Los Angeles? Um, the weather right. mainly and just, you know, weed and life is a lot better out here. Yeah, how old are well, you? I used to be. I'm um, 25. 25. That's good. How long have you lived out here? Seven years. Seven years. That's mm-hmm. great. You moved out when you were 18. Just about, right yeah. That's Somewhere awesome, there. man. How'd you, how'd you end up making that move at such a young age? Uh, you know, I Saved just Saved money did or it. something? And yeah, I mean, get a one-way flight for 300 bucks. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. So How about sleeping? Like, what did you do after you landed? I moved in with my mom. Oh, you got a mom out here. That yeah, changes yeah, things so a that bit. Yep. Easier. Yep. Absolutely. Safe. What does your mom do? Uh, she works in catering management for a hotel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You close with her? Not really. No. Where does she live? What part of town does she live in? Westwood, I think. Okay. Not really sure. You don't know where your mom lives? No, I probably should. Maybe I'll hit her up after this. Do you know where your dad lives? Both of them, yeah. Mm. You have two dads? I've got two dads. Not gay, but two dads. Where are they at? Brooklyn? No, I got one in Virginia and Uh one in Portland, I believe. Your biological dad's in Portland? Yep. That is correct. I could tell because you look like you would uh, try to storm a federal courthouse. (laughs) You can feel the Portland (laughs) energies beaming off of you. Have you ever uh, protested or rioted in any way in your entire life? You ever go to the Occupy movement? No, I didn't do that. All my protests are internal. Like what? What are some of your internal protests? I used to be an emo kid. Yeah? I don't know if you can tell. Mm. I don't wear it on my sleeve. No, I get a little bit of punkabilly. Like, uh, is that the word? Rockabilly. Rockabilly. Sure. Get some rockabilly vibes from you. I'll take it. You play any instruments? Nope. You have any special skills or talents? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tattoo artist and a freelance graphic designer. Oh, so. okay. What's your favorite tattoo? On myself? Yep. Um, Is that an R2 unit there on your elbow? Yeah, it's Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. okay. Same, same close. world. Probably this, uh, it's a full shoulder chrysanthemum. Oh, cool. Got oh, it. Oh, Very look cool. at that. Two months back. Chrysanthemum. Friend of mine did it. Hell yeah. That's fun. Tattoos are fun. How about your yeah. biggest, most regretful tattoo? Uh, when I was learning how to tattoo, I tattooed an X-Wing fighter from Star Wars on my shin. Ah. I was sitting on my carpet just going at it freehand, and it looked like a little phallic after I was done. It looked like a lumpy cock. I'm just going to be Can honest. we see it? Is it still there? It's covered up now. You can't really see oh, it. Oh, okay. So it, it looks a lot better now. I got it lasered off and covered up, but for a while I had to wear knee-high socks. It was <laughs> not a good look. Ah, uh, okay. All right. How about now during the quarantine? What do you do for fun? How do you pass the time? I'm sure a lot of listeners are figuring out ways to do this, and they might you might have a big piece of information that they never thought of. Yeah, man. Uh, unemployment. It's better pay than working in any industry right now. You make, I mean, till the end of this month, now you're not making that extra 600 bucks. But for a while there, I was just making more money playing Ghost of Tsushima on my bed. Ghost of Tsushima. It's a badass new video game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima? Yep. What do you do in that? Make sushi? No. No. That'd be <laughs> Ghost, you're, that'd you're be ghost of Sashimi, by the way. Strike one! <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in the video game? You kill a lot of Asian people with swords. Whoa, whoa. If I were to write a summary. Whoa. Did that come out after the coronavirus did? Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. No better time to kill Asian people than when they're killing us. Am I right, people? No. Because of that disease? And the crowd goes wild. (laughs) Zach, you ever been arrested? Four times. For what? Uh, 
not paying while using the subway in New York. Mm. Uh, I put my feet up on the train once, and that got me arrested. Wow. Um, Look at seriously? you, the subway yeah. fucking, the subway bandit over here. Kind of badass. One time, time I stole a foot long. <laughs> I didn't do anything that criminal. How about the other two times? Once, once um, for the foot on the seat on the subway, once for not paying a toll. There was a bunch of shit when I was a Turned teenager. Turned into a werewolf really once. A lot of it. <laughs> One time I tied a woman to the subway. <laughs> No, I never got caught for that. You don't remember the other two times you got arrested? Um, they were all on the train because that's they've tons of police on the train. Wow, that's yeah, it was incredible. Random shit while I was in high school. Oh, you know what? That actually reminds me of a funny story that my brothers reminded me of this past uh, this past week when I hung out with them for a quick barbecue. When I first moved to LA, I once took my bicycle down on the train. This is many years ago, like 15 years ago, and they tried to give me a ticket for uh for riding the bicycle in, uh, in the lower area. You're not allowed to do that. And they're like, you fucking stop. And then they had to chase me, and they ended up getting me. It was a whole big rigmarole. I'm like fucking 19, 20 years old at the time. And they're like, we're going to write you a ticket. Give us your ID. And I'm like, I don't have an ID. And they're like, okay, well, give us your information. And I immediately realized that I can lie, right? But I'm like halfway through the thing lying about my information for this ticket. I had already said Tony Hinchcliffe, and they're like, give me your address. But I was halfway through lying. So I got all the way to, uh, I'm like, they're like, what city do you live in? I'm like, Burbank. They're like, what's your zip code? And I'm like, fuck, I only <laughs> know, the only zip code I know <laughs> in LA is my actual zip code. So I told them 90210. <laughs> <And they> did <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't even fucking blink at it. They were so serious? excited to give me a ticket, it worked. I know. I know. Fucking train police. You could have lied the whole time, dude. I told them to fuck off. I think that's where I went wrong. Yeah. Has anybody ever told you that you look like the, uh, is it the uh, Green River Killer? The Green? Ryan J., who's that serial killer? BTK. I've never heard of him. No? No. Look up, uh, will, you, will you pull that up real quick? Just, Tony just, just, just for me, just so that I can confirm. I believe it's BTK Keller. Chroma Chris said that he looks like Ryan J. Ebelt's son. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so not that picture, but that one. <laughs> that one over there. No, not that one. That one. It doesn't matter. Dennis Radar. Yeah. Raider. Yeah. You have Dennis Raider energies. Have you ever thought about killing anyone? Yeah. We've had serial. We've actually had a murder on the show before. Same it's, energies it's as you. House, it's funny. Yeah. He reminds me of Purse House. Like very, very Clark Kent. That's like what I was afraid of, to be honest. Clark Kent with a touch of a uh, rockabilly. Okay, I'm not gonna push anybody off a balcony, but you know, I okay. stay away from second floors. All right. He actually threw her. Did he really throw her? I believe hell of an arm. I mean, I was gonna <laughs> say you're the sportscaster. That's quite an opportunity there. All right, Zach. Well, uh, fun times, man. Thanks for coming on the show. You finally made it, dude. Thank you. Zach Bogus, everybody. Oh. Was a bullfrog. <laughs> yeah, word he said, but I helped him sip his wine. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that part of the night where we bring up a regular who I absolutely adore. This man uh, did a great job uh, doing the show with me this past weekend. We did a big, crazy, uh, packed show at a uh, drive-in. It was a drive-in comedy show and uh, a lot of fun times. Him, Jeremiah, Jetski Johnson all did some time. I love this man. Very funny. Roaster. He's going to make fun of me. Ladies and gentlemen, David Lucas with a brand new minute of stand-up comedy. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm trying to lose weight and shit, uh, but I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get like a six pack, a six pack or biceps or anything. I'm just trying to get in shape enough to where I can fuck a girl with my shirt off. Cause I'm tired of fucking bitches in tall tees and Jordans. <laughs> but ever since this latest invention, I've been fucking girls in Skechers shape ups. Because not only do you got not only do you tone your thighs and your ass, but you got the rocket motion going on when you're hitting it. Like you can reach new levels in pussy. I'm tired of skinny guys thinking that they fuck better than fat guys. Like it's impossible. I got 300 pounds of pressure coming behind my dick. How do you fuck better than me? Pressure makes diamonds, bitches. There's a reason 
we have PSI. <laughs> I'm tired of I'm tired of girls getting with me and complaining about being on top. Like, do you trust these arms over you in the missionary position? <laughs> there you go. Hey. These minutes are long as fuck with no audience. No, you're doing good, man. <laughs> nah, I know, you're man. doing good. Yeah, fuck it. You believe that, though? You believe fat guys fuck better than skinny guys? Nigga, I got 300 pounds coming behind this stroke. What you mean? I know, but it's not really. I mean, like, I don't think they need that much. It depends, on, it depends on what type of fat guy you are. Like, Red Band probably don't fuck with his full force. <laughs> <laughs> Red Band, what, how, what are you like in the bed? I've, I've asked thousands of people on this show. I've never asked you. What, do you, what, what is your uh, move in the bed? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I like to bring a lot of food into bed with me. Oh, we know uh, that. And, uh, and my bike. Uh, I like to put that <laughs> in there. And uh, no, I, I, think, I, think what, I don't think there's much. Like it's, you have a fatter dick if you're fatter, for sure, because uh, your, your dick's fatter also. Nope. We know that's not true. No, it's true. Nope. If you, when I lost weight, I lost weight on my dick, too. <laughs> did, it, did it come back when you regained of the weight? Of course it did. <laughs> and w when I lost all that weight, my dick had, uh, you know, the, the markings, you know, from... Uh, it had stretch marks? Stretch marks Get on it. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, it did. It, it, and it's weird because, like, you know, my dick's like a little darker color, like it's brown. And it had like these white, like like spaghetti veins all over. Oh God! Or it could have just been spaghetti because I'm in my bed, you know. So my red oh band my put gravy God. on the pussy before you eat it. All right, all right. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Flipping bottle caps? Is, what are you doing? Your guys' stingers kill me. Red band. Okay. Because uh, I mean, skinny guys can perhaps also they have. Uh, I'm just pitching here. Maybe I don't know, but. I feel like we would have an advantage, perhaps, uh, also in the, in the uh, like getting between the legs, like really like forcing I'll, it in there. You know what I mean? I don't know, but all the bitches I fuck with be like, you don't fuck like a fat boy. They say you fuck like a skinny guy. Well, they say you fuck like a medium guy. Right. Uh, they be like, you got stamina and shit. Like, you have stamina. You have good cardio in the bedroom, or yeah, you? Yeah, bro. You know I do the miles. How about man? you, Red Band? You have the cardio of a guy that rides a I bicycle tell you, or I, an electric. I tell bicycle. you, if I'm drunk, I, I go for like hours. Like it's <laughs> the fuck out of here, man. No, seriously, I have like opposite of whiskey dick. Like I, if, if I'm drunk, I'm just like going wow to forever. So you have sex for hours, seven nights a week. Then. Seven <laughs> nights a week, four <laughs> hours a day. Oh my goodness. But it's with the virtual headset. <laughs> <laughs> Some, it's right. I have my virtual headset. Red Bay, you, you, you a fat guy like me. Do you fuck with your shirt on? I do. You no, I, I, I get completely naked like a seal. Yeah, and yeah. So I like to hear like the flapping, you know, the flopping and the flapping. Being a little like a deep How about fried swimming? Turkey, do you guys right? swim with your T-shirts on? Uh, no. It depends on where I'm at. It depends if I shave my back or not. No, just kidding. <laughs> Bruh, yeah, that's, girls. That, that's the embarrassing part. <laughs> Red Man takes his shirt off. Everybody's like, ooh, look at all the hair on his back. I take Yikes. my shirt off if I see another fat nigga with their shirt off. Okay. And then I'm like, bitch, you ain't got a better fat nigga body than me. Okay. So, yeah. That makes sense. So you just have to make sure someone else has a unshapely body. Too. Yeah. I don't get the shirt on. It just makes it look worse. It's like you're now you have like a shirt sucked onto your body. Right. Like why well, would I, I just mean, take off your shirt? Yeah. If you're fucking a bitch in that collar shirt, I would take that shit off too. No. No. Come on. We're talking about swimming now. Swimming. Oh, swimming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, nah, a, a jersey. That's the cool fat dude thing to go to the pool in. A jersey. Really? You, know, you got the. It's like a tank top. Yeah. Okay. So if what? you got decent arms. What kind of jersey would you wear to the swimming pool? Any kind. A new jersey? <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> he's fat. <laughs> Motherfucker. I hope y'all call what, me What that jerseys way. do you have? I jersey got, Mike's. Uh, <laughs> jersey <laughs> Mike's. <laughs> I get your three Jet stooges ski. licking brum, ass. Brum, 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 brum. What was it? She looked like the three stooges. Oh, come on. Don't <laughs> You can't roast these characters, nah, David. That. I don't know. <laughs> it's very hard to he roast got, silly. He got a PGA tour jacket on. I mean, yeah. He actually worked the PGA Tour last <laughs> year. That is right. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> uh, what jerseys do you have? Uh, I got uh, Irvin Johnson. Oh, wow. Uh, Shaq. I got a few jerseys. Kobe, old jersey. I'll never wear that one again. LeBron, when he first. You retired your Kobe jersey? Yep. Oh, my goodness. What did you, you do with it? You put it through the uh, spin. He spin. ate it. All right, man. If you don't get your, uh, you look number like, eight is look. Kobe Bryant's jersey number. There you go. Some 
more, much more famous for 24, but you are correct. Yeah, he was right. number eight for a little while. Uh, I got a, a Carmelo Anthony uh, high school jersey. Did you really? say Carmel when Anthony? He at, when he was at Oak Hill. It's Caramello Anthony. <laughs> 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 he Fuck also has Marshmallow this. Anthony. What kind of jersey you got? I have a gay booty hole jersey. Oh, uh, okay, it's know. got uh, dildos and booty holes on it. So I pull, I pull it out of my booty hole. It looks like a dildo, and then I shake it, and it's a tank top. Tony don't got he, a Packers jersey. He got you hit you from the backers jersey. Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> You've heard of a tank top? My jersey's, my jersey's a tank bottom. That would have hit so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess Jeremiah didn't this like bad, that This bro, one. yeah, bro. This is the fucking apocalypse episode. They can just do what the fuck <laughs> Tony, uh, we had fun this weekend, dog. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we did. We had a great time. It was we, at a car We had club. a fancy meal. Yeah, we did. Took Jeremiah and David Lucas to a restaurant called Salt, as if though David needed any more salt in his diet. We, uh, <laughs> we went there. We had a great meal. You had the salmon and the onion dip. Yep. Jeremiah had the pork shoulder with a Brussels sprout. Slaw. Slaw. I wasn't used to the fancy food because I usually eat Aldi meat. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did talk about that old bullshit. You sale. eat Aldi meat, and David eats all the meat. <laughs> and you eat the sweet meat, motherfucker. That's right. I eat that <laughs> straight up booty hole Jenkins. That's my name. You take, a, you take a hot dog off the grill and put it in the bed with you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What is going on? <laughs> What's your favorite kind of candy, David? I never asked you this Shit. before. Reese's in the freezer? Reese's? All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I said I love the Wait, stinger <laughs> thing. I see what... Y'all it was good when <laughs> Chroma and Jesse were doing it, but Jeremiah <laughs> shoehorning his way right. through the middle here. Just... Oh, God damn. Reese's in the freezer. Hell yeah. What else? Uh, that's really all I fuck with. Reese's. Uh, Is there any wrong way to eat a Reese's? Hot. Don't eat that bit. Eat, you got to put it in the freezer, man. I mean, have you ever had a Reese's that's melted? Well, let me tell you the best kind of Reese's, bro. Not the ones that come in the orange package. The ones that they sell for Halloween, the little cups. Yeah. Yeah, they got a little crisp to them, bro. Mm -hmm. You keep those all year round? Nah, nigga. <laughs> 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 you make niggas throw candy in your booty hole on Halloween. You know what? I actually do that. I had corn in my uh, poop the other day. It was candy corn. Because <laughs> I have so many people throwing candy in my <laughs> booty hole. I'm running out of gay jokes to tell Tony. I got to come up with a new animal for this nigga. Or a new, no, you a got new this. edge. A new no, you got this. Yeah. All right. Or maybe it's time to start roasting red bands. Uh. No. No, I'm joking, man. You can't <laughs> roast red bands. Nah, that's my nigga, bro. Have you ever ridden an electric bicycle before? I won't, because I'm not gay. No, it's not a gay thing. <laughs> that's not a gay thing, or else I'm I'd joking, be doing man. it. Yes. You ride Dolphins with... gay. Everything I do is gay. If you rode a bicycle, you wouldn't have no seat. You'd just sit on the pole. I would. I actually <laughs> do. I sit on a pole. Actually, it's a dildo, yep. and my bicycle handles are both dildos, <laughs> and the pedals are booty holes. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right, we hey, ruined the stinger thing. How did it you, took how did exactly eight minutes after I said I love the stingers for them to ruin it, everybody. How did Go you, ahead, David. How did you feel about the outside show, bro? An outside show like the Kill one we Tony? Did no, the one we did Saturday. I liked it. I told someone earlier it's a uh, it's, uh, hundred times better than not doing a show, and it's 25% uh, as much fun as doing a show. I like in that. In front of a normal audience. They hunk, they hunk the horns. Tony had a art. Tony actually brought the fucking apartment building behind us out. Yeah. He had a whole it was wild, he man. had a whole audience from the apartment building. We had yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, okay, we got through it. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. David Lucas. Yeah. There we go. On to the next one we go. Another great set by David Lucas. Here we go. Back to the bucket we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I pulled the third person out of the bucket for tonight's show. Make some noise for Shongi, everyone. It's Shongi. All right. Um, 
I came out a little bit ago um, at the beginning of the year, and this quarantine has been a fun experience realizing how gay I am. Um, I have fallen in love with Home Depot recently. It started out with buying a cactus, which was super simple, um, and then I upgraded to lumber, and then I upgraded to cutting lumber, and then I upgraded to stealing bolts, and then I upgraded to stealing um, shower curtains, shower rods. There's expensive shit at Home Depot, and the CEO doesn't like black people, so that is my protest. Um, I also have become obsessed with porcelain dolls, and I've slowly been turning my husband into a porcelain doll. Uh, I grew, his hair has grown out long and curly. I had him shaved. I've been putting my facial products, so he's very porcelain and very pretty. Um, I started ordering doll clothes for the him. They don't fit, but I'm working on it. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> there you go, Shangi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. You've been on this show before. I'm not even a comic. Wait, what? <laughs> that was fucking terrifying. Really? I want to shit myself. But you've been here a lot. I've seen you yeah. in the been audience here a, lot. a lot. I watch. Right. And it's your husband that does comedy full time. And mm -hmm. he's with you here tonight, right? Mm -hmm. He's signed up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. That was good for your first time, though. Yeah, yeah. that was great. <laughs> we couldn't even tell. <laughs> I thought you were a comic this whole time. Um... Why don't we let him do a spot? Why don't you grab a seat yes. right behind him? We won't even have to change the microphone because you guys are husband and wife. Ladies and gentlemen, here's her husband, Evan Jones, everybody. Here comes Evan Jones. It's Evan Jones' his name. Uh, this is awesome. I'm finally going to fulfill my dream of doing stand-up in a David Lynch movie. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be an edit where everyone's faces are made of meat, and then it'll slowly fade out. <laughs> And people will be like, that was so good. Uh, before quarantine, I went to Disneyland. Fucking magical. Went on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. The animatronic Jack Sparrow has more life left in his eyes than the real Johnny Depp at this point. <laughs> Disneyland's nice. I'm not used to theme parks being nice, you know? Like, I go to Six Flags. Six Flags is just white trash Disneyland. <laughs> like, Six Flags is a theme park, but I'm not sure what the theme is supposed to be. <laughs> They're like, I don't know, cartoons and flags? Who gives a shit? Loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> That's right. There you go, Evan Jones. <laughs> Damn, look at your hair. She's <laughs> lying, man. What happened there? I, uh, I went, at one point I looked like, like a sitcom dad from the 90s. I was like a Danny Tanner. Yeah. And then I went to an Uncle Jesse, and now I'm like going Elvin, I think. It's <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Looking good. Yeah. Killing it. Very, very, very good set. Oh, thank you. That's fun. Is that all stuff that you wrote during the pandemic? I wrote all that right before. I wrote like a whole five minutes about like theme parks right before theme parks didn't exist. So I've just been sitting on a bunch of theme park material. It was all good. I, I love oh, the thanks. David Lynch part. I don't know if you're allowed <laughs> to say Lynch with your wife that close sitting behind <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, um, no, I think I, I am allowed to say it because of that. Right. No, I know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, how long have you been doing stand-up, Evan? Uh, like 10, more than 10 years, 11 years, something like that. All of it like here in L.A.? No, all, all, mostly in New York. I moved here like three years ago. So it was just like, I started in New York, and then I started doing some just DIY road stuff, like maybe four or five years in there. How long have you been in L.A.? Um, since, when did we move here? Like 2016, I think. And what made you want to do that? Um, just New York. I will just, there was a, a lot of people had a weird thing. A lot of guys had like a weird like jock thing against me and it sort of made it difficult to move up socially. In New York. Yeah. Right. Yes. They do and, that um, there. It's very tough guy. That's yes. the New York scene. They're all tough guys until they're around an LA comedian and then they, yeah. then they bend at the knee. And then I, I also am very into like psychedelics and weed and stuff. And a lot of the New York guys are more like. Right. L up Smoke late cigarettes. Yeah. I, I, this is my fucking sixth coffee of the day. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so they would just be like, who the fuck is this guy trying to talk right. about this weird shit? I right. don't know. And then also it's like, I, I have a lot of social anxiety, but I don't look like I should. So they took it as maybe arrogance or something, like not being able to socialize for a while there and stuff. Yep. I don't know. No, I get it. I know exactly, exactly yeah. everything that you're talking about right now. The, the scene in New York is uh, definitely not, um, not exactly wide open to the thought of innocent looking, <laughs> uh, innocent looking, uh, you know, hippie esque dudes, yeah, free or even spirited guys. Even like the, those things conceptually and material, it's like um, if you're not like angry or sad, then you're fake or something. Exactly, yeah. one hundred percent. You <laughs> yeah. cannot show any happiness whatsoever, even if you're wildly successful. Even the best comedians in New yeah. York you seem have to be angry, miserable. even yeah. though they're happy. Um, okay, that's fun. What part of New York did you live in? Um, when I first moved there, it was I was staying in like dorms because uh -huh. I was going to New York Film Academy, which uh -huh. was fucking bullshit. Right. So I was just staying in dorms in like Manhattan, and then it was Brooklyn, and then I lived in Jersey City and Astoria, then back to Manhattan. So just kind of all over. How about around. now? How about in LA? Where do you guys live? We just moved to Rampart Village, like on the edge of Koreatown, but we were in like Hollywood proper for. Like, right, we were homeless, like, Airbnb homeless for, like, seven months when we first moved here. Because mm -hmm. Airbnbs had, like, all the fucking rent way jacked up. And so we had, like, a weird place that ended up turning into kind of a crackhead hotel recently on, like, right. Wilcox. Right. But then Airbnbs crashed, like, a couple weeks ago. So now there's a bunch of dope shit. We got a way better place. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you, how do you survive right now? Um, I was on, I was working at a weed factory and was laid off right before the shutdown. So I was able to get the boosted unemployment. And I just started back dog walking because that's just the only gig I was doing that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't have to interact with any people at all. So. You like dogs? Yeah, dogs are fucking dope. Yep. That's also what makes it awesome is I just get to hang out with dogs. I get good Instagram videos of all these other people's dogs I don't have to pay for. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. it's fucking great. Love dogs. We were talking about that before the show. Yeah. I like the weird ones. I like uh, Shih Tzus and Brussels Griffins. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, fuck I yeah. used to have a Brussels Griffin. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. It's famous now. It is. Uh, it, it, in fact, it just made its Comedy Central debut oh, last true. week. Holy little shit. Pepper. It's, it's, little uh, Pepper. <laughs> it was uh, me and uh, Esther Pavitsky's dog. Dude, holy over shit. Over a decade ago. That's amazing. They're the best. Pepper's on the uh, poster. Do you see that? The yeah. promo poster for What show. a great poster, too. The yeah. artwork that they did on that. that Incredible. I thought it was, a r it was so good. I thought it was a Ryan J.E. belt yeah. for a second, <laughs> but it wasn't. Um, that's fun. You, yeah. you guys don't have your own dog, though? No, we, we, we were waiting for some place that didn't have carpet because we had r weird, gross carpet in the last place. And then she wants to get a chihuahua, so I think that's down the line. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Chihuahuas, chihuahuas. chihuahuas are prone to getting the coronavirus. <laughs> spreading it wildly. Anything you want to say about this force, Dunks? I am white. I am from you're, Philadelphia. No, you're the resident <laughs> chihuahua correspondent on the show. Is there anything you'd like to say about chihuahuas? Getting coronavirus more often? <laughs> yeah. I would say that's fake news. <laughs> no. Chihuahuas. Fake news. Chihuahuas get the, the shih tzus started Says it. who? The media? The, <laughs> the enemy of the people? <laughs> oh, shit. Shih tzus started it. Do you know anybody that's gotten the coronavirus? Yeah. I've known a couple people. Okay. Do, um, you know how, do they know how they got it? Um, No. Yeah, it's one thing that I've noticed is <laughs> the people that I know that have gotten it don't know how they got it. There wasn't like some mysterious coughing person. Am I correct? Uh, am I correct? Uh, <laughs> Gary Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got it and I know how. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I thought you didn't know. I know. Who gave it to you? I ate a bat. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Did that you was a baseball bat, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, my dad lives in a homeless, like in the VA shelter downtown. He hasn't gotten it, so I don't know how you get it, really. Oh. I feel like that should be Corona Central, and it's not. It should be. Probably not a lot of chihuahuas in that room. <laughs> <laughs> I chihuahua. <laughs> I chihuahua. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, your wife and you, you guys yeah. are in an interracial couple. How, yeah. any, any wild times with that? You guys ever, like, drive through Arizona and people are like, what the fuck? It's been the opposite. It's when we moved here, people were overly supportive. Right. So they'd be like, we love what you're doing. Like, yell at us from <laughs> oh cars. Oh, my like, God. 
<laughs> like you go, girl. You oh know, my just, god, that's so fucking wild. Yeah, it was super. Because in New York, no one gives a fuck. Like everyone right. just dates what everyone just does everything. Right. I, I fucked. Uh, I put my dick in a dumpster the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a New York fucking guy. <laughs> what are you looking at? Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's, uh, but here it's like weirdly. People notice racial thing. I think because they're trying to like cast you in something, mm -hmm. so they'll like notice racial things. And so, I feel like there's not as much like crossover or social interaction or something. I don't know. I guess it's maybe also the city is set up in a way that it's like segregated strangely. You and Shangi uh, think about making a baby at any point? You guys? Gonna, yeah. You, w w yeah. I feel like you guys are gonna make a beautiful child. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, like, with nice <laughs> tits. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Red Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good Lord, Brian. Out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, we're going to have a big kid with big old titties. <laughs> like, that little Lord. baby. It's fucking, it's like, damn, that baby is fucking confusing me. As a white man, let me ask you this. As a white man being with a black woman, are you ever, were you ever, have you, was that your first black woman that you've been with? That I've dated full time, yes, but not that I've like hooked up with. Right. With when you're with a black woman, are you ever concerned that perhaps you don't have all of the penis that they're used to? No. You have a special package down there. It's not that. It's not that my dick is like excessive, but it's just like, I don't know. I I did the na the first naked show in New York, and yeah. everybody was like crazy about how big my dick was or whatever. But right. It's, I don't think it's not like the dick a dick that would like stand out in a porn gangbang, but I think it's just like aesthetically perfect. So That's it great. like so your kid's yeah. gonna have big tits and a big dick. Yeah, That's at incredible. least a very like a very Fuck nice yeah. dick and gigantic titties. That's incredible. We have a big dick correspondent on this show. Let me just see where oh, yeah. he is for a second here. <laughs> Let's check in with our big dick correspondent. I know what that's like. Hey, why don't you why don't you come back up to the uh, the stage, fucko? Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. It is yeah, our Joel. Big dick correspondent, I mean, uh, Forrest Dunk, Forrest. everyone. He he left the stage where the show is for a moment. Sorry, I was so big I needed to let it breathe for a <laughs> second. Forrest, you're known for having uh, for having a massive uh, cock. This is true. Yours <laughs> also made its debut in a New York naked roast. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any questions for uh, for Evan Jones or uh, any concerns about his big dick? Or perhaps you guys are, maybe you could start a club or something like that. Yeah. New York Big Dick Association. Maybe start a new baseball league. <laughs> but we only hit the ball with our cocks. That's what I meant. Two balls, one bat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Evan, uh, very fun. Amazing oh, set, man. All the oh, way through you. from beginning to end. Very, very good. Shangi, thank you so much. <laughs> Her her comedy debut. What a beautiful couple. Yeah. We we love what you guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. Shangi and Evan Jones, everyone. <laughs> All right, we're going to squeeze our one last bucket pool up here. Ladies and gentlemen, you know this guy. He became famous during one of the quarantine episodes as he famously had sex with William Montgomery's girlfriend before William did. He's back, ladies and gentlemen, with a brand new minute. Here's Mario Tonti, everybody. One, two, three. <laughs> Here we go. Mario Tonti. Mario. Go back to your country. That used to be racist, but now it's just good advice. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of deaths from coronavirus. Uh, a couple months into quarantine, they started comparing it to the number of uh, deaths in 9-11. They were like, oh, we're up to three 9-11s now. Uh, I think 9-11 is my favorite made-up form of measurement next to smidge and cunt hair. <laughs> you probably can't tell this by looking at me, but I had an abortion with an Asian girl from Tinder. That's not exactly what I had in mind when she said she wanted to hook up. Um, she told me to come inside of her. She can't get pregnant. Yeah, I fell for that, Michael. She also couldn't come. 
So either she got the two mixed up or I just heard her wrong. Either way, we swipe left on the baby. Um, I've lived in LA for seven years and it was the first time I had Korean takeout. Thank you. Wow. Mario Tanti. Mario Tanti. Wow. Incredible. It's so much funnier than William Montgomery. It's incredible. He it's came amazing. right into the show that William is a regular on. Kicked off his set with a William Montgomery formatted like joke, but much better than all the jokes that William did tonight. Plus, followed through with continuous good set the entire one minute and nine seconds of his set using all of his time, unlike William, who dipped out at 41 seconds tonight. Uh, so you came in, you fucked his girlfriend, <laughs> then you came in, had a better set than him on his show. How do you feel right now, Mario Tanti? I feel pretty good. I'm glad to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. That's incredible. Uh, That's inc how happy are you right now that William left early? He left early? Oh, <laughs> we're, we're actually best friends. That I actually don't know his girlfriend. That's been a bit the whole time. Whoa, uh, that's great. Look no, at that. We, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, not. okay. Yeah, uh, no, I had a feeling. But, that's uh, not the Korean girl, though, right? No. Because that would be an even bigger revelation if we found out that uh, she carried your baby for a moment, that there was a little baby Mario in there. I wish. Maybe baby Mario. We know about that. That was an actual uh, Mario Kart contender. Baby Mario? Right? Isn't there a little baby Mario? Oh, uh, yeah, the small Mario. A little yeah. half Korean Mario? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, Mario, what have you been up to this whole time? What's going on? Just hanging out in one unemployment. Lost my job. Restaurant industry's in the, in the shitter right now, so... No sous chef jobs out there. Just been hanging out and relaxing. And aren't you aren't you happy that you live in a country that has unemployment? Yes. Yes, you are. That is correct. The United it States is, of yeah. America, the greatest Good country answer. in the world. Absolutely. People just take it for granted. They're like, oh, I'm on unemployment. I'm on unemployment. I'm on unemployment. And then everybody talks about the stimulus package, but that's an extra thing. That's extra bonus money. Anybody who was employed now is on unemployment. I can't get them. You're well, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, th thank you. You Donald. do such a good job keeping us out of wars with other countries. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so, Mario, what else is going on? You're collecting unemployment. What have you been doing to pass the time? Me, golf. We've talked about that earlier. What's your golf? <laughs> going on walks and drives, going to the beaches and trying to just What do get you out. do when you go to the beach? Just sit there. You sit just on sit a bench or on the on the on the on I the sand. I brought a blanket a few times. You took there. a blanket. I did. You have extra blanket. You seem like a guy that would only have one blanket. I I've, I just got a new comforter. My, I, it's, it's you a take a comforter to the no, beach. No, like I have multiple. Jesus blankets, Christ! This like guy takes his fucking duvet to the beach. <laughs> it's a Ninja Turtles blanket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your com? It's a normal comforter. White. Yeah. You have white. a white comforter? Yeah, my sister keeps telling me I need to get a different one. She said it looks like a girl's comforter. No, white's great. You wipe your cum all over it. No one will see it. I Wait, know, right? how does your sister even see your comforter? She lives here, too. She, I showed her. Showed her so she, uh, you live with your sister? No, she lives down the street from me. And she came over. She's like, uh -huh, you got a girl's comforter. Yeah, she's like, get a black one. That looks stupid. A black, black one? Then you the get, worst. I mean, red band knows. You get yeah. cum all over, all over it from using your uh, Roman. Yeah. You mm -hmm. put a little Roman... Yeah, put a little infinite CBD lube all over it. That's right. Yeah, That's black right. comforter <laughs> is like <laughs> is like as dumb as having white underpants. Wait, the black comforter is like having white underpants. Yeah, it's like the worst idea ever. Why? Red band gets skid marks. <laughs> this just in. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really got a skid mark. Poopy and pee pee on the white stuff, Tony. <laughs> come come on the black stuff. <laughs> Red band is a high class gentleman and he enjoys Miller High Life, the champagne of beer. I was talking about blood. Oh, yeah, you have a lot of blood coming out yeah, of you? Yeah, especially when you have a tushy. You know, you get too much water in there, and it just drips out. Oh, that's a great ad for tushy. <laughs> what a great ad for one of our sponsors. Hey, blast your ass with water so hard you stop fucking bleeding. Hey. Yeah, it, it, it cleans it out, though, good. Well, he could do is use the tushy and blood all gushy. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, there it is. <laughs> all right. So, Mario. You uh you have a white comforter so far. This is what we found out. I've been about arrested you. too. All these guys have been arrested. Oh, been tell arrested. us about uh, it. I got arrested with heroin one time. Oh my God, were you doing yeah. the heroin or were you selling it? I didn't it? get to do it yet. But, really? Well, I mean, I was doing it, but like I I, I didn't get to do it that night. Right. So yeah. what happened? How'd you get arrested with it? Put your feet up on the train? Yeah, I went <laughs> I went with a guy from work to get heroin 
and we got pulled over on the way back. Uh, Why did you get pulled over? Uh, I think my tail light was out. Oh, oh man. Classic, shit. classic junkie mistake. Fuck. Um, so how did you get from just a tail light <laughs> warning to them searching you? They smelled something well, in the back, car. Well, back where I'm, where I'm from, like the. It was ten years ago. Like the cops, like if they pull you over, like they look for anything to like search your car. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. Yep. Yeah. They do have tough police there in Pennsylvania. What part of Pennsylvania are you from? A little south of Pittsburgh. A little south of Pittsburgh. What are we talking about? Uh, Sharon, Bessemer. Like Mount Lebanon area. You know uh, the Gumps. The Gumps. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. How, about, know the how about the Dunks? The Dunks. Do you know the Dunks? I know a couple Dunks. Yeah. Forrest. Do you know Forrest Dunk? Yeah. He's a, he's he's an, uh, he's he's. We actually watched Jurassic Park together last week. Ah, oh, you are wearing a Jurassic Park shirt. Why is that? Target? But, but he's on a swing because it's, it's a park. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, that. So cute. You know, it's fine. Oh, my goodness gracious. You have, a, you have a girlfriend now? No. no. Last girl you've been with, who was that? Just a couple Tinder people. Oh, nothing, nothing. that was during the quarantine? No, this was way before. Okay. But yeah, when I, when I got arrested with heroin, I told him it wasn't mine. Because uh-huh. I, I tried to get out of it. And, and they're like, they, whose was it? And I was like, I was getting it for a friend. And they were like, well, that's a felony now. Oh, oh. my God. Oh, my God. That like, makes you the dealer. Yeah, it, oh makes, my it God. makes you intent, <gasps> intent to distribute. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. So what ended up happening there? They ended up lowering it at the end after I got a lawyer and oh paid for God. a lawyer. But like initially, it was intent to distribute heroin. Wow. My Goodness. Always say it's yours, even if it's a lot. Or always just put it in your butt or something if you get pulled over. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's Red Band's <laughs> really policy on everything. Like, I threw it under yeah, the whether seat. he's getting pulled over I thought I was going to get out of it. Wait, what? They searched whether my he's car. getting pulled over or not, it's <laughs> yeah. his policy. Shove it <laughs> in your butt. <laughs> Pull the electric bike over now, sir, please. <laughs> 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 it's hard to pedal with this heroin in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't going to pedal anyway. <laughs> oh look! A you ever heard? <laughs> I'm peddling heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Whoa! The first Joelberg chant in months, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of those episodes where he started cold and he ended bold. A true Joelberg. <laughs> He's peeking out like the coronavirus right now. We're gonna have to shut it down. All right. <sighs> Mario Tanti, anything else interesting about you that we should know about? It's um, been a fun set, fun interview. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I've been doing stand-up about a year. So you ever have fun. weird dreams? I've all, I'll, I'll t- I had a dream the other night that I was on a, I was on a Hinge video call with a girl. We What's Hinge video? Just it's, so that it's I like know. A, it's like a dating app, Hinge. Okay, no, I don't know because I'm happy. Yeah. Hinge means you have like a friend <laughs> that knows the friend or a friend. It's oh, kind of like, well, like okay. it's a dating app, but like you can like video call people to say hi. They added that during quarantine. Whatever. So I had a dream that I was on a hinge call with this girl, and in the middle of the call, she shows up to my apartment with a gun. Yeah, she showed up to my apartment with a gun while we were on the call, and I like she went to go like point it at me, and I jumped at her, and then she pulled out a knife, and went to go swing it at me, and like as I I said no in the dream, but then I sprung up and said no in real life, and wow. But yeah. And that call never even happened. No. You never even talked to that girl. Nope. Our brains are fucking weird. They are. My favorite part of the dream was that it was a gun, and then your subconscious thought, oh, it's too scary, and then made it a knife. <laughs> 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 I think in the dream she was mad. She said that I sent her my, my dick without asking her. I think that was why she showed up with a gun. Intent to distribute. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> my goodness gracious. <laughs> All right. Uh, there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Fun, fun set, fun thank interview. You, you. Mario Tonti, everybody. There he goes. All right. It is that most special part of the night, everybody. Um, you know, I mean, this fucking guy, I don't know where to begin. I just love him with all of my heart. He's incredibly, incredibly agile, entertaining, and hilarious. You know him currently as one of the contenders of the Easter Seals film competition. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's Michael Lehrer. <laughs> Here he is, Michael Lehrer. All right. 
So, Brooks Brothers Suits is closing. Of course they are. Mitch Warehouse perfected the suit store. You buy one suit, you get three free. If you're not giving me four suits for the price of one, get the fuck out of the suit business. Taylor Swift just came out with an album. She said it's full of her dreams, fears, musings, and thoughts. It's called the four-part harmony of the queef. <laughs> now, the Washington Redskins have changed their name to the Washington team. Let's call it how it is and call them the Washington elite African Americans coming to your town to make your wife feel something she's never felt before. <laughs> because that's all racism is. Fear of a black planet, all right? Every racist wife, once she gets black, that bitch ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Michael Lair. Hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, blown the horn, boy. I like that. That was a good set. That was like a yeah. like a uh, Tonight Show set. It was. was. It was like a weekend update uh, with Michael Lair, which yeah. I absolutely love. Wow, Michael's eyes are locked in on <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins right now. This is yeah, very interesting. More wig drama. So Baby, bring me over my Tony. Oh, what is this? Oh, my goodness. He's got a pamphlet? No. What is it's that? It's a Chicago Tony Award. Oh. It's called the Jip or a Gib. A Joseph Gifferson Award for Excellence in Theater. Wow, you have the Jeffro Gifferson Award for yeah. Excellence in Theater? Yeah, man. Oh. You don't know who you're fucking with. Wow, this is, this is uh, perhaps this is talking about last week's episode in which we found out that Jeremiah would not share a wig with Michael Lair. He yeah. needed a wig to play a woman for well a Well, it turns out I got plenty of wig money, bitch. Wow, uh, he's got wig money, and you no only eat Aldi meat. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, you can hide behind that character, <laughs> but I see you in there, all right? <laughs> and next week... <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen next week? I'm very excited about this. I challenge you... To a monologue off. Whoa! A monologue off. Oh, actor uh, versus actor. Mono, a monologue. Let's see who's the master thespian to kill Tony. Wow, look at this. I love this challenge. Jeremiah, do you accept the challenge? Thespian versus thespian. Mono versus mono in a monologue. What kind of uh, monologue are we talking? Same one. And the Rambo, Rambo Part One, First Blood, Rambo the First One, the End of Rambo. So the End of Rambo, the First One. First Blood, Rambo Part One. Part One of Rambo, First Blood. Roman numeral One, Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Rambo? I thought he was saying Rainbow this whole time. He's saying Rambo. Rambo. John Rambo, motherfucker. You better become him next week, because I will. And everything you <laughs> build, <laughs> everything you build will be gone next Tuesday. Wow. Next Monday. It's next Monday. No. The morning after. Oh, yes. The <laughs> next morning. Yes. Absolutely. Next yeah. Tuesday. It will all be gone. Everything you build. And you... And you will no longer believe <laughs> in God. You will no longer believe in God? He just said that I will no longer believe in God after he does his monologue <laughs> next Monday. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited That's pretty about wild. This. 
Wow. Chicago Tony Award. Did you put your own sticker with you in a wheelchair <laughs> on your Tony Award? <laughs> <laughs> Can we zoom in on that? That is Michael Lair in the top right corner of his own Tony well, Award. I was wondering if they gave those to all the uh, participants who got that award or just you. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, a little bit of trash dog, you idiot. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. Oh, let's, let's read some names on here, Chairman. All right, great. I've got a, a solid chunk of 15 minutes for you to read the certificate. Oh, oh I don't wow. think. Wow. Jeremiah Watkins. That sounds like a fucking stage name. Are you a pussy with a stage name? Wait, is this true? I always thought that was your real name. Yes, my mother actually named me Pussy. <laughs> you, you have like a fake... I <laughs> love you <laughs> Since I'm on a wheel of dice okay. Caught me by surprise I need you <laughs> When the moment we are in a I long you know for your warm embrace, the caress of your face. I <laughs> 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 that brings us to our next segment because I'm done with you, and next Tuesday morning, God's done with you. All right, but right now wow, he just threw his Tony Award like it was <laughs> nothing. It doesn't mean I'm, anything to him. I'm gonna sell it after yeah. the content. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know I'm gonna have you and Brian sign it, and uh-huh. then I'll sell it on Etsy. Absolutely. I'll make a deal with you right now. If I lose, I will take your ALS from you like the Green Mile. Wow, he's going to suck your ALS right out of you. Yeah. He's going to have flies come out of his mouth. Bring it. Let me take it. I want it because look at the platform it's giving me. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Larry, you're the fucking best. I'm really ex- oh his eyes are covered. Can you zoom in now, on that? Just can we move on? All right, I like um <laughs> before I f- <laughs> fell in love with comedy or rap or magic, my first love was karaoke. Oh and my goodness! It's since I've gotten sick, I haven't been able to karaoke. And honestly, I don't know um, what it's going to sound like because although this sounds pretty good right now, and that's why I'm covering my eyes to see like a blind person, they hear better. I wonder if I talk better if I'm blind. You actually sound amazing. Yeah. I thought, I, thought it was, I thought it was Walter Cronkite over there for a second. I stopped looking, and then I... The stay in the life. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, there he is. Yeah, that's my next SNL impression. Okay. But uh, moving on, uh, with the help of the man, Mighty Jeremiah's bitch ass, um, I'm... Uh, in, when do you all get so sensitive? That's <laughs> good. I'm, I'm going to sing my favorite Carrie Wilson song. Now, I understand a large portion of this podcast is an audio component. Mm-hmm. So if it gets unbearable, please stop it. Okay. And also... Nurse slash girlfriend, are you there? Come to she me. Is. She's right next to you. She has a All sp- right. spray bottle. Now, when I'm going to be singing, I might n- um, spin or snot, and she'll want me down. <laughs> uh, harder, because it'll be quick. Yeah. And then I get, <laughs> 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 I get overheated, so... And baby, make sure in the microphone is away. So if I turn to you and open my mouth, spread <laughs> 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 Oh, there you go. 
There you go. All right. So, where Brian? <laughs> That was the song Stepmother by Dan Zig. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Michael. I'm really surprised there. You, I don't even think you got one word out, and uh, the only word of that song really is just mother. You really couldn't. Uh, Somehow the headband made him blind and mute at the same time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> headband. <laughs> now I know Wow. That I can't do a karaoke here again. Oh, right, we're the Helen Kellers. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Wait, what? Helen Keller was blind and oh. deaf. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be Andy Sullivan, miracle worker. You hear that? Theater references, Jeremiah. There is only one master thespian. You're not coming. looking in Jeremiah's direction right now. <laughs> you hear that, <laughs> Jeremiah? <laughs> Theater <laughs> references. <laughs> you hear that, Jeremiah? <laughs> Theater references. There's only one master thespian on Leech in the Skin. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great way to end tonight's show with the extremely powerful Michael Lair. Next week. It's him versus Jeremiah Watkins, mano a mano in a monologue challenge. Rambo, Rambo versus Rambo. Rambo versus Rambo. It's going to be a goddamn slambo. <laughs> He's giving Jeremiah the thumbs down. He's also giving the thumbs down to the far left speaker of the stage. He hates that oh, speaker. Oh, he just gave he just gave one of the neons the middle finger and he's telling the neon to go fuck himself. Jeremiah is the opposite direction. Look to your left. No, that no, not that way, Michael. Not I'm that way. Master <laughs> thespian. <laughs> that's not. No, that's the guy that went up first. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lair Comedy for everything. Michael Lair. Anything else, Michael? Um. Yeah. I'm, uh, no, I'm fucking. Oh, check out his video. His yes. Easter Seals video is available right now. That's give right. him a view. Give him a comment. Give him a like. Uh, we need all the Kill Tony fans just to go over there and check That's that out. That's right, because they judge it off of views and likes. Is that correct? That is one category I <laughs> plan. <laughs> <laughs> what are the other categories? Best, best actor, film, and editor. I want to win editor, um, yeah. but um, I'm my cup overflowing, so I don't need... Oh. Well, a lot of people in the Easter Seals cup overfloweth, let's face it. It's a lot of spill, spilly cups in that competition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm fine with not meaning. It's nice to uh, bring... Um, that sounds like a man that feels like he's about to lose <laughs> to children <laughs> with special needs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you weren't um, fine with not winning two weeks ago when you <laughs> said you were going to do it. <laughs> All the competition, he's like, oh, I can't beat that guy. Well, <laughs> we'll see if you can beat uh, Jeremiah Watkins in a monologue off next oh, week. Oh, that's going to happen. I <laughs> You're going down, Jeremiah. John Rambo's my Jeremiah, cousin. Jeremiah, let the record show. <laughs> that he is losing an Easter Seal special mm -hmm. needs film competition, but he's confident he's going to beat you in a <laughs> monologue <laughs> off next week on the show. <laughs> Extreme confidence that he can beat you. A girl with Down syndrome that's four years old is dominating him right now. But, uh, but you, easy pickings, he would say. Yeah. Jeremiah. What's your YouTube called? Michael Lair Comedy? Yeah. Go to Michael Lair Comedy yeah. channel. 
Look at his Easter Seals video. It says Easter Seals in the uh, heading. You can't miss it. Uh, and uh, give it a like, please, for the sake of Kill Tony. Don't, don't let us lose a... Don't let Michael... Tony, I don't care about all those, <laughs> all, all those instructions were wrong. Okay. Michael Lair, everybody. MichaelLairComedy.com. Let's check out the drawing from Ryan J.E. Belt tonight. Let's see what we got here. Here we go. Here it comes. Look at that. Wow. It'll get in a little oh, bit there. Cool. Push it on in yeah. so we can see different parts of it. Yeah, that's great. Wow. Incredible detail. Incredible. That is just mind-blowing. RyanJEbelt.com. Look up the Kill Tony heading on that website, and you can find every print ever done all there. He is the house artist for years and years and years now. Incredible stuff. Uh, hey, Jeremiah Watkins was here, everybody. Jeremiah is doing Raw in North Carolina, August 13th to the 15th. Minneapolis, August 26th to the 29th. And uh, as a new episode of Jeremiah Wonders out with William Montgomery, his Venmo's at Jeremiah-Watkins if you just want to give him free money. Jeremiah, anything else? Uh, YouTube.com slash Jeremiah Watkins. Head over there. Got a lot of great content, especially with William Montgomery and a new uh, Tibby sketch uh, where he interviewed a cow. There you go. How about the great Jesse Jetski Johnson tonight, everyone? High kill ratio. I mean, just knows how to pick those moments. Gary Balls was here. <laughs> Gary Balls oh, yeah. was in the house. Kind of sounds like Harry Balls. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I mean, oh. I, what? <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> 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 I thought it was Gary Balls the whole time. <laughs> gotcha. Jetski <laughs> is uh, at Jetski Johnson on all social media. What yeah. else, Jetski? That's it. Come over to my social media and hang out. <laughs> Come on over and hang out. Hang out. Spend a few hours on our social media. Uh, you could even take over her social media if you want. Her password's probably really easy to guess. Vroom, Just keep vroom. trying. You have two-factor two factor authentication. What's it called? Vroom Vroom 69. Vroom Vroom 69 is the password. Ladies and gentlemen, Chroma Chris was here the entire time. Believe it or not. That was Grand Slam Sam. Grand it was Slam him. Sam, coming to you from the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> what else, Chroma? Did we miss anything tonight? Uh, uh, no, thank you to Orange Champs. And also, you could follow me at Chroma Chris on Instagram. What would you think about tonight's episode, Chroma? Oh, Tony, you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, the fans of this show are never going to believe this because he was in character so deeply. But believe it or not, Forrest Dunk was actually Joel Jimenez tonight. <laughs> oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa. I even knew that, and I couldn't believe it until you took off the wiglet. Jer Joel is at Mostly Sorry on social media. What else, Joel? Uh, I think we got a premiere of a Mostly Sorry podcast, me and David Deary, tomorrow, 5 o'clock, YouTube. Uh, and that's it. That's right. And David Deary is at MF David Deary on all social media. Follow this guy. I mean, he has his little hands in all the funniest cookie jars. He's with, he's with us on Kill Tony. He's with the great Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. And he's with m pretty much fucking who I think is uh, top, th top three funniest human beings in the world, the great Donnell Rawlings over at the Donnell Rawlings Show. Yeah. Um, David is a, uh, a wizard at these things. He's a great person to have around, a great energy, and we absolutely love him. And at a great kisser, too. At MF David Deary. Uh, Red Band, anything else? Uh, check out Brothers in Cursive at DeskSquad.tv with William Montgomery and David Lucas and Brian Holtzman's podcast. It can all be found at DeskSquad.tv. And check out me in virtual reality at Virtual Red Band on YouTube. That's right. Go to InfiniteCBD.com. Use the promo code KILLTONY. Get 20% off. Go to GetRoman.com slash Tony and get $15 off your first order of ED treatment. And if you, want, uh, if, you're, if, you, if you want to make fun of people better in your normal life or learn more about roasting overall, the history of it, talk to some of the great writers of it, or the writers in, in the history of it. We have Greg Giraldo's ghostwriter on this week, the great Jesse Joyce, who's been on Kill Tony, and so many other fun things. That's at Patreon.com slash Hinchcliffe. All right, that's it. See you next week. All right. <laughs>